uh, so good morning again. Uh, I have prepared a completely new presentation about the IT, uh, about the current state of IT security in Slovakia. The name of the presentation or title of the presentation is for the third time, everything wrong. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you about like a three big fails of National Health Institute uh, in Slovakia, how uh, in our company, uh, we were able to reveal trivial critical vulnerabilities. And thanks to these critical vulnerabilities, we were able to uh, to download uh, all sensitive, almost all sensitive COVID data on all citizens of Slovakia. So let's start. Firstly, very short background. Uh, I'm IT security guy. I do IT security for the last 20 years. I created multiple uh, ethical hacking, uh, security hacking companies. Uh, Net and Hectrophy also have some other companies. And in the past, I participated uh, and I was looking for vulnerabilities in many, many different public services uh, or, or, or massively used products. Maybe I should mention that I reveal like critical vulnerabilities in SMS tickets, like a public SMS, uh, which, which are used for public transport in most European cities. Also with my colleague, uh, we wrote the first open source, the first open source cracker. Uh, thanks to this cracker, we, we were able to crack almost 1 billion of Mindfair Classic cards. And these were like really huge. So if you use, for example, ISIC or Euro 26 or any of these uh, massively used cards, uh, you were vulnerable and it, it was possible to find like keys to crack this card, uh, find the keys, make the clone of these cards. Also, I reveal another vulnerability in parking tickets in Slovakia. Two years ago, we also did a big hack uh, we reveal um, we, re we reveal a serious vulnerability in the system, which is used by all Slovak entrepreneurs. I mean, more hundred thousand people to register cash operations. So, for example, in Slovakia, when you want to when you go to supermarket or you go or you go to to restaurant, you buy anything, uh, you pay by cash or you pay by card. This information is immediately sent uh, to uh, Slovak tax office. And they use like a specific hardware where they store the sensitive information. We found a way how to how to compromise, uh, how to how to uh, completely emulate uh, system which is which is used for recording this sensitive information. One important thing uh, we always follow responsible vulnerability disclosure. So what does it mean? We always notify the vendor, like the given institution responsible for the given service or product. We wait a few days or a few weeks or a few months uh, for the fix or patch for, from, the, from the given institution. And after that, we release the information about the given vulnerability. Uh, we did it in the past. We still are we, we're still doing, uh, doing that just now. But, it's, but unfortunately, in these days, uh, we are facing like a... Uh, they're, they're trying to sue us, so, so we are uh, facing like a legal process in Slovakia, unfortunately. So now I'm going to uh, tell you about uh, like a, something that is related to COVID. And in Slovakia, we have one important institution, which is called NHIC, which means National Health Information Center. What does it mean? Um, in Slovakia, like everything related to COVID or COVID data management, it's highly centralized. So for example, when you make any COVID test in Slovakia or you are vaccinated in Slovakia, you're vaccinated in Slovakia, this information is immediately uh, uh, sent to one place. So, so basically the National Health Information Center is responsible for gathering, analyzing and storing of all COVID tests of all people who are or who were tested in Slovakia as well uh, for our COVID vaccination of all citizens. And this is like a really big thing because it means that National Health Information Center is a single point of failure, which, which means when anyone compromised their application of servers, all COVID data of, about all, in all citizens will, can leak and can be misused. For example, in Czech Republic, uh, it's decentralized. So in the Czech Republic, there is no one centralized centralized uh, place where all this information of all patients are, are centralized. 
But unfortunately, uh, in Slovakia, we have everything centralized. So just one vulnerability can lead to uh, can lead to a leak of all COVID data sensitive information. And this is exactly what happened. And I'm going to describe you how. So first fail. Uh, in um, 30, 30 of March 2020, uh, the amount of COVID positive people leaked from this National Health Care Institute. And um, because in that time, we consider COVID positive people, infected people to be so dangerous. So National Health Care uh, Institute, they decided to publish the, the map where all these people, people live. It, of, co of course, there was no specific names but there was uh, some crucial information for each person. And this information was the age of the given person, uh, gender, uh, if it is male or if it is female, and the street and the city. So basically like an approximate uh, address of the given person. And what was the goal of this? Probably the goal was to reveal location where there are the most infection or where is the highest concentration of the infected people hard to say. It. Of course, uh, National Health uh, Institute uh, argue that this information cannot be misused. Of course, it can be. Uh, so so what, what was possible to do? Uh, it, is po it was possible to make something what is called de-anonymization attack, because uh, it's quite likely there are probably not many people with a given age and gender living on the one street in one city. Yeah, so when you just think about how many people who are like males or females uh, with, with, with specific age live on one street, probably one, maybe two, maybe three, but not more. So let's de-anonymize that. So uh, you can find a lot of uh, sensitive information about property owners from the public Slovak cataster that, uh, ha that has all information about owners including their name, including birthday, uh, including birth numbers. So it is possible to download all this information from the public institution, which is called Slovak Cataster about the owners. Uh, so it's possible to find out exactly who are all owners of the, the given properties on the given street. So then what we can do, we can just filter all people from this list with a given age, then we can filter all people with a given gender, like males or females. And voila, we have the name of all COVID-19 uh, positive, uh, uh, positive person. It's quite likely it will be just one person or maybe two person or just very few of them. Uh, it is necessary to say that this de-anonymization attack uh, works uh, just for the owners of, for, of property. So it's not possible to reveal identity of renters because uh, information about rent, renters uh, it's not in this uh, in, in this public cadaster um, so uh, despite despite that we described that this attack is definitely possible it seems that this, uh, this attack has never been publicly executed uh, so national health um, uh, institute center they stop propagating uh, these pseudo anonymous data about patient that can be easily de-anonymized. And of course, everything in Slovakia is connected with the politics. So Slovak politicians, they started to spread rumors that this addict is definitely not possible. And of course it was. Okay, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's switch to the second fail. Uh, exactly one year ago in our company, we were able to enumerate and download all COVID tests, almost all COVID tests of all people. Now you can see like a very simple, very funny script uh, that we used to download 100, 130,000 um, um, tests um, or for about 900,000 90, um, people. And it, as you can see, it is very simple, very stupid. So, so using this, uh, this script, it, is, it was possible to enumerate and download all COVID tests of all people who were tested in Slovakia. No kidding. So very simple script. So basically it means that 
using this script, uh, we were able to, to download the name and true name of each tested person, birth name, date of birth, uh, gender, mobile number, place of residence, health information, like for example, about clinical symptoms, also the name of laboratory where uh, the given person was tested, uh, his medical doctor and protocol number, and of course, uh, the result of his COVID-19 uh, test. So, so really a lot of sensitive information. So if I can summarize what was the fail. So, so just this simple vulnerability uh, lead to the leakage of more than a quarter of million personal data uh, of all COVID tests of all Slovak citizens. And it was possible because of the following, uh, following issues and following problems. Uh, First, there, uh, there was like a leak of API format to the public search engine. So we basically find out how exactly this API looks like. And thanks to this, we were, we were able to reconstruct it and, and uh, make, uh, make this download link. Then uh, there was possible to, to uh, make like a direct call uh, with no authorization to this API, API call, any authentication. So we just run this script and it downloaded all this sensitive information. And we were able to do that by just simple enumerating like this number. It was very, very easy. And another critical thing is that there were no mechanisms uh, that stopped us. So, so we could do that for 130,000 uh, 30, records for 90,000 90, people. And all downloaded information uh, were unencrypted. So they basically means they were in plain text, no encryption was used at all. So um, just more information, uh, when, we, when we downloaded all this information, um, it, uh, of course, this information can be massively misused. For example, they can be, uh, they can, they can be misused to carry out, carry out sophisticated scam attacks, for example because we know like all sensitive information about these people, um, uh, they can be misused for some kind of impersonification attacks. So, so for example, someone can call you to pretend to be your medical doctor or your insurance company asking you for some money or something like that. So, so we can imagine a lot of scenarios that can, that can be used to, for the potential misuse of all these, of all these information. To be, uh, it is necessary to say that we, we have never ever published this information and we deleted all this, the, all this information uh, after the agreement with the Na National Health, uh, health, uh, uh, health Institute. So, so the question is, there are many questions we should ask. The, fir the first question is uh, why such sensitive information about COVID patients uh, were, were placed on the public internet. Why all this information uh, wasn't anonymized or encrypted in any way? Why uh, it, it wasn't protected in any way by authentication? Why they store really a lot of information, several months old? Why, why the information about several months old patient records were, wasn't destroyed? So, so we should ask so many questions and till now we have never received any answer to this question. And uh, in Slovakia, we have a new law, a new regulation. According to, the, to this new law, which was approved, uh, it, was, it was like a pandemic law, which was approved last year, uh, Slovak government can receive location of all, like a physical location. Uh, GPS like coordinates uh, location from the mobile operator for each uh, Slovak citizen from mobile from, for, from mobile operators uh, without court order. What basically means the Slovak government knows knows exactly location of all people thanks to their mobile phones. So the question is if the state cannot protect the personal information of all people tested on COVID and apparently it cannot. The thing is, why do we think it can protect the sensitive location data it can obtain from mobile operators about the location? So I'm very skeptical about this. Uh, because this was like a really 
uh, this was leak of uh, a lot of sensitive data uh, for a large part of select population. Of course, we uh, follow the responsible disclosure of the, of the vulnerability and we contacted third uh, last year, 13 of September, and the vulnerability was fixed immediately in three days. Oh, no, it was not immediately, but it was fixed in three days. And after this vulnerability was fixed, we published this information. We, pub we, decide we decided to publish the vulnerability report. And now, what happened last month? So we were able to download the EU vaccination certification certificate for any citizen of Slovakia based on their name and date of birth. And this was really critical. So another third fail. Um, in Slovakia, we used a special application, which is mandatory, which, which is called eHranica, which means like something like eBorder. And this application is mandatory and it has to be used by all people who are traveling to Slovakia. It doesn't matter if these people are citizens of Slovakia or not. If you are traveling to Slovakia or you are coming back to Slovakia, you have to, f to, to, to use this application and you have to feel a lot of personal data. For example, you have to fill your name, your birth number, uh, unit or some ID number assigned by another country, your email address, your mobile number, uh, the information whether you were vaccinated or and, and therefore you are not going to the quarantine or not. So, uh, so when you're traveling to Slovakia by car, by plane, by train, Officially, you should uh, use this application and you should provide this information to the Slovak government. And we revealed one month ago, we revealed critical vulnerability in this application. We revealed that this application, Ehranica, allowed really anyone to change the contact details of any registered citizen. So, so, so for example, uh, when you, you, in Slovakia, everybody uh, everybody has some kind of unique identification, which is uh, birth number. Birth number is basically uh, uh, is basically uh, constructed for the birth date, but it's not only birth date. There's just some uh, another numbers. So, for example, in Slovakia, uh, when you when you went uh, and you you were vaccinated. Uh, during the vaccination, uh, during your vaccination, you feel or you provide you provide it to the government some personal information. So, for example, your email, uh, your mobile mobile phone, mobile phone number. And what we reveal that if later you use the application Ihranica with a, with the same birth number, uh, you are able to update to set up the new contact details for the given birth number uh, without any other question. So basically it means if you know the birth number of any politician, of any person in Slovakia, you can register him or her um, to, uh, to the system and you can easily, you, you could easily change uh, contact details of the given person. And this was, uh, and this was critical. So, I tried to uh, summarize it again, just to uh, to make it more clear. So firstly, you could fill a Hranitsa application, which is mandatory for anyone whose birth number you know. Uh, so when you're, when you're filling this information, you just set up the new contact details for the given person, you know the birth number, and then during this, uh, you could trivially gain full control over all communication channels because this information is updated. So to these new contact details, you could send, uh, for example, uh, his or her EU COVID certificate, or you could do you, you could you could do any other operation on behalf of the victims. For example, you could uh, do register for vaccination change vaccination, vaccination registration, edit any personal information, and so on. So, so basically, this was like a really simple, stupid uh, vulnerability, just the possibility to change like a contact details for any person, you know, like a birth number. So the question is how to reveal the birth number? Because 
probably you know the the birth date of any person uh, you, you can you can find like a birth date uh, of famous people for example celebrities or politician and wikipedia and we can we can find like a, a birth date of all other person at facebook so it's quite easy but the the question is how it is possible to reveal to find out the birth number uh, according to the information according to his birth date number or birth date and his uh, name so um, select and check birth numbers can be expressed in the following uh, form as we can see it's basically a 10 digit number so so there's like a year month day and some and four random numbers but the thing is that the whole 10 digit number has to be divisible by 11. So, so uh, we, we, can, we can estimate there are, for, for the each um, birth date, there are like a 10,000 birth number, but it's not true. Because if, if, it, if it is divisible by 11, for the, it means that for the each uh, birth date, uh, we can generate or we, or we can find out just 900, uh, 909 birth numbers. And that's exactly what we did. So we used like a trivial script to generate all male and female numbers. So uh, it, it's like 15 million uh, birth uh, numbers, uh, male birth numbers, and about another 15 million female birth numbers. So together, 30 million. But the thing is, these birth numbers were completely generated. So the question is, how uh, how how it is possible to find out which of these birth numbers are real? So uh, we reveal we, we find out another government service, like a publicly available government service, uh, which is called verification of insured person insurance relationship. So this is the link, and this is like a really really uh, simple form when you just get you can put birth number of any person with uh, optional information like a name and true name. And uh, this form immediately shows you if the given person, uh, if the given person birth number is valid, valid or not. So very easy. So what we did for, for example, for any celebrity, uh, we know the birth, uh, birth date we generated exactly 909 uh, potential possible birth, uh, birth numbers. And we use these following portals just to find out which of these 909 birth uh, uh, numbers are uh, valid or not. And it works in 100% cases, so super reliable. Uh, this uh, portal had also some security issues. So for example, the CAPTCHA uh, verification was totally broken, uh, so we could reuse CAPTCHA multiple times. And also, uh, there was another optional uh, field, like a name and true name. And thanks to these optional fields, we were able to uh, specify the name and, and true name of any person we are looking for the birth number. So, so um, after um, after contacting con after contacted CERT, uh, they fixed this portal. So they basically fixed this capture verification, and they also removed. Uh, these optional fields like a name and true name. Okay, so thanks to this, we were able to find out birth numbers of several or almost all prominent Slovak politicians with a minute, minutes, and also we were able to download their COVID certificates. Or if they were not vaccinated, they usually did like an antibodies test. So we were able to uh, do download or antibodies test. Um, and we did it for prominent Slovak politicians. But of course, uh, this is possible to, to do for uh, to identify the birth number of any citizen of Slovak Republic and download his COVID uh, certificate or uh, result of his COVID antibodies test. So basically, we find out that it is possible to, to do for basically anyone in Slovakia. And then we analyze like multiple possible scenarios because this was possible to this was possible to do just for the person we know uh, we know his or her birth number or birth date. 
but what about like a massively download vaccination certificate of all citizens? Uh, this is likely possible because uh, it is possible to use uh, uh, land registry or cadaster in Slovakia, cadaster where uh, the each owner has sensitive information of any property, uh, has information like a na name, sure name, his date of birth. So basically, uh, in the past, there were multiple uh, multiple tries uh, to completely leak this land register or the cadaster. And also, there is like a private database, which is called State Population Register. Only specific institution in Slovakia uh, has um, have access to uh, to these uh, state population registers, like mobile operators, for example. And all these institutions, they know exactly like a birth names, uh, birth name of all their customers, for example, of all people. So when they uh, when they use the vulnerability I described before, uh, using they were definitely able to download uh, uh, to download the EU COVID vaccination certificate for most people or maybe even the whole population. And now uh, let's describe some uh, nasty consequences of, of this attack. So the first thing is, uh, what is quite nice about this attack is that you can download uh, the uh, valid EU vaccination uh, certificate of your name namesake. So if there is another person with a uh, for example, my, my name, Pavel Luptek, is uh, quite common in Slovakia. In Slovakia, there are at least like a 20 different people with the same name, like, like, like my name. So the thing is, uh, it's quite likely from this, uh, that this maybe one third or maybe half of all these people are vaccinated. So what I can do, I can just, can, I can, I can just download uh, the COVID certificate of my namesake and I, can, and I can use this uh, certificate basically everywhere as an unvaccinated person. So I can, uh, I can use it to enter restaurants, all places where all these vaccination certificates are required. And what is quite interesting and funny is that nobody assume, uh, assumes that anyone can update their names, namesake EU vaccination certificate. So it means uh, when you have the same name like uh, uh, like your namesake, nobody nobody will will check your date of birth uh, when checking the EU vaccination certificate. So it's very likely that this impersonation attack will be feasible. Another big problem is that uh, thanks to these uh, mandatory application e hranica e border, it is possible to contaminate completely uh, this National Health, Care, uh, Health Institute uh, database. And basically, you can, you, 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 you can put to quarantine virtually anyone. And this is really dangerous. So for example, when you know like a um, birth number of any your favorite or non-favorite politician or any person, uh, like a birthday, then you can, then you can like a generate a birth number. You can register this given person to the Iranica. And it's really, uh, and for example, if this person is not vaccinated, and when you just uh, register him that he is or she is coming back from some dangerous country, some Africa or Brazil or, you know, some COVID uh, dangerous country, um, according to our legislation in Slovakia, this person is automatically at risk of mandatory quarantine and he or she needs to go to quarantine and basically there is like a denial of free movement. So uh, we did demonstrated that the e-hranica e application can be very, in a very easy way completely contaminated and makes no sense and we recommend it not to use this application. Unfortunately, this application is it's it's still used in Slovakia, uh, and because this is also a big thing, uh, well, we did like responsible disclosure of the vulnerability. So we contacted uh, CIRT uh, 30 of July 2021, and uh, they confirmed it uh, three days after. And basically, in one week, 
like 10 days, they fixed all, they fixed all these vulnerabilities. But despite the responsible disclosure policy, Na uh, National Health uh, Institute has filed a criminal complaint against unknown perpetra perpetrator. And unfortunately, we are the only ones uh, who can be prosecuted. So uh, what just happened is that instead of saying thank you a lot for telling us about this critical vulnerability, uh, National Health Institute, they accused us uh, that we uh, that we stole the birth number of citizens, and this is like this is like a lie because we have never done it because we generated them from scratch. And they all always uh, uh, accused us that we publicly misused uh, uh, this no National Health Institute to change the contact details of citizen and steal their data, which also we have never done it because we follow. Black Day for IT security in Slovakia because it's a very dangerous precedent. Uh, and it means that no IT security firm or no IT security people will have any, any incentive to report any vulnerabilities in the state in state system of Slovakia because they will face uh, the risk of prosecution. So I consider that this is really dangerous what is just happening. And I Strongly hope it will survive this legal process. That's all. Oh, thank you a lot for your attention.